Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here, and today I'm going to reflect on 10 important lessons that I learned during my recent two-night winter bushcraft trip to the Queen Elizabeth II Wildlands. If you haven't seen the trip, I'll link it in the description down below, as well as the video I made where I was preparing my bag for the trip. But before we get into it, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below as it really helps out with the channel's engagement. Number 10, let's get the non-skills related item out of the way first. I need a better camera and microphone. At this point, all of my outings and a lot of my other footage has been recorded with my aging GoPro Hero Session 4. To be honest, the video quality is terrible and the audio is atrocious. Just listen to this nasty static. I need better and more up-to-date recording hardware so that I can improve my overall video quality. And I'll have more updates on this in a few weeks when I release my New Year's channel resolutions video. Number 9, wool blankets are awesome. This was my first trip using one, and I had no idea how warm they were. One of the guys out on the recent trip, Steve, had only his wool blanket and temperatures dropping down to negative 8 degrees Celsius, negative 16 with wind chill. Mind you, he was cozying up to the fire all night, but it's surprising just how warm wool can be. I now know why it's so frequently called king in terms of clothing and blankets out in the woods. From here on out, my wool blanket and my climate sleeping pad might be all I take with me on above zero degree Celsius trips. Number eight, I need proper outdoors clothing. Related to number nine, I had regular cotton socks on for this trip, even knowing the dangers of that in sub-zero conditions. After I got my feet wet on the hike in, it was a constant uphill struggle to retain body heat for the rest of the day until I managed to dry out my socks and my boot liners. I consider this trip to be the final kick in the arse I need to go out and get a bunch of wool socks. I'm also on the hunt for some other good wool clothing too, like sweaters. Number seven, more and more, I'm finding the limitations of my current mess kit for bushcraft, especially if I have to boil water for purification. My Stanley cooker just isn't cutting it in terms of size, not to mention the poor thing starting to disintegrate. Apparently heating it to glowing red in the fire to burn out remnants of food melts out the soldering holding the handle bolts in place. Considering getting myself a proper stainless steel bush pot for cooking and boiling water, especially in winter when the use of a filter is risque in freezing temperatures. It's a bit of extra weight, but I can probably cut weight elsewhere. Number six, I need to learn proper knots. Full disclosure, I have yet to take the time to learn any knots above my basic shoelace style knot. After an exhausting hike into camp, I found myself really struggling to get my tarp tied up, and I think my lack of any proper education on knots is a big part of the issue. I'm gonna spend some time binging some relevant YouTube videos and getting some practice in so that I don't look like a preschooler with string while I'm out in the woods. Number five, my sleep system was not sufficient. Even with the wool blanket and sleeping in literally all of my layers, base layers, sweaters, uh, puffer jacket, winter coat, winter mitts, ski mask, and even being zipped up and sealed in my sleeping bag, with my wool blanket covering me, I was still on the verge of being too cold to sleep. I even started shivering at some points. This led to some minor sleep deprivation on the final day and contributed to the absolutely miserable 10 kilometer hike out I, I had to go through. My sleeping bag was only rated to negative six degrees Celsius and the temperatures we encountered were negative eight degrees Celsius overnight, felt like negative 16. Next time I'll have to bear the extra weight of the heavy duty winter sleeping bag I have that's rated to negative 30 and hopefully the better sleep makes up for the extra seven pounds it is for my winter sleeping bag over my fall and spring bag that I brought. Number four, I am very unfit and the hike in and out really kicked my butt and made that apparent. I was left almost exhausted by the time we got to camp and that left me a bit of a lazy immobile lump of crap at camp for the first day. I felt like I didn't nearly contribute as much to the group as I should have with things like firewood procurement and other camp chores. And to make matters worse, I was encouraged a month in advance to get some exercise in. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes, I suppose. I have a gym in the apartment building's basement that literally just finished renovating. I'm going to start getting down there and getting a lot of cardio in. You know, starting off small and ramping up over time. Number three, the Bockel Laplander just doesn't cut it as a bushcraft or camp saw in the winter. 
In the winter time, you'll consume about three to four times as much firewood as you do in the warmer weather, and the Baco is too small to efficiently do anything but light duty firewood. For winter time, I think I need to invest in a proper bow saw like the Boreal 21. It's what frequently gets recommended to me, it's popular in my group, and if I'm not mistaken, it's what Joe Robinet uses on his trips as well. Although I might have a different bow saw that I can use as well. More on that in a future video, it's a top secret, fun little project I have to bring to the channel in a little bit. Number two, my pack does not sit comfortably. My waist straps sit way too high up on my stomach, and I can't lower them any further than where they currently sit. The frame is exposed on the bottom, which digs into my back, and the sternum and waist straps can't fit around me when I have my winter coat on, making things worse. And hiking around with it, even with the gear down to about 32 pounds, is a constant literal pain in my upper back. I need to replace the whole bag with something far more ergonomic before I do serious damage to my back with it. And number one, it was a huge mistake not eating breakfast and having a coffee on the morning of our hike out. Of all of my regrets from this trip, I think this one was my biggest, and it could have given me so much more energy for the hike out, but I skipped it and ate a few handfuls of honey roasted peanuts instead. Stupid, stupid mistake. Not enough calories to fuel the hike out of the park. Consider me a learned man, I won't repeat this mistake going forward if there's a long hike out. So there you have it, 10 important lessons I learned from my recent two night winter bushcraft trip. I absolutely made a bunch of rookie mistakes, but the most important thing is I think I learned from them and never feel dumb for making mistakes if they teach you something. These trips are great learning experiences for me and help change me from a desk bound code jockey into a proper outdoorsman. Thanks for watching guys, and as mentioned previously, check out the description of the video for a link to the bushcraft trip itself, as well as the bag build video I did leading up to it. If you are new to the channel or otherwise haven't done so, please consider subscribing, and please leave a like and comment down below as it really helps out with the channel's engagement and makes YouTube push my videos in front of more people. See you next week guys!